Welcome to the second of a two-part series on how to program Hummingbird using the CreateLab Visual Programmer. This video will show you how to add sensors and make sequences. If you'd like to follow along with the video at home, you should connect a distance sensor and the simple bot described in the last video to the Hummingbird. Also, make sure you still have access to all the expressions created in Part 1. To begin, go to the Sequence Builder tab. Once there, you can click and drag expressions into the builder. So here I'm clicking and dragging uh, the expressions made in the last video, like left and right and center. And these correspond to states of my simple bot. So now if I hit play on this sequence, my simple bot moves from center to left to right. I can also adjust the amount of time it takes to be at each state by um, hitting the little clock symbol in the expression. And here I've changed them from a default of 1 second to 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 1.5 seconds. Now I can save this sequence by hitting save. And I'll just call that simple move and now it shows up under my list of sequences on the right-hand side. It's often useful to have a robot repeat a sequence a few times in a row. For example, maybe a servo should wave an arm three times. A program element called a counter makes this easy. To use a counter, click and drag it from the Structures tab in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen. Now you can drag expressions into the counter block, here I'm dragging uh, left and right into the counter block. And if I hit the little lock, I can change the number of iterations. So now I've changed it to four. And if I hit play, we'll see our robot go left to right four times. And I'll save this as left right wave. Now I'll add some color to my wave by adding the LED expressions we made in the last video. So I'm putting in the green and red expressions. So it'll turn the LED on green and then set um, the servo to left and then turn it red and then set it to right. I'm changing the time for the LEDs to zero seconds so that they get set instantaneously so that it looks like um, the LED is set, being set green and the servo is going to left at the same time. So now I'll save this as left right with color. The Hummingbird comes with five different sensors, allowing your robot to react to people moving nearby, light levels, temperature, sound, and more. Sensors make your robot much more fun and they're easy to add into your sequences. If you want to follow along with our example, we're adding a distance sensor to point out of the left side of our simple bot. We're simply attaching it with a loop of electrical tape. To begin, click and drag the sensor block from the structures in the bottom right of the window. Note that you can use drop-down menus to select the type of sensor and the port the sensor is on. A green bar shows the value of the sensor in real time and in the case of the distance sensor, it ranges from near to far. The sensor block is divided into two parallel tracks to place expressions and sequences. Only one track is active at a time. Right now, we're placing expressions such that if the distance sensor detects that something is near, it will turn the symbol bot's LED green and go left, pointing in the direction of the sensor. If the sensor doesn't detect anything, the LED will be red and point right. We're also changing the arrows at the bottom of the block from st straight to repeating. This makes it so that the tracks within each sensor condition will repeat until the sequence is stopped. Note that it is possible to set only one track to repeat. So here we have the sequence playing, and as you can see, when someone's hand comes close to it, uh, the robot turns and points towards the hand. Note that you can also change the threshold for which track gets selected. 
here we've just changed the threshold so that the distance sensor uh, near track gets selected even when the there's something relatively far away and now we've moved the threshold so that you have to be very near to the distance sensor in order to select the near track there you can see how close you have to be in that case Our last topic is the nesting of sequences. Placing sequences inside one another can make your programs look more compact and can make them easier to manage. You might also want to nest sequences because currently it's not possible to directly put a counter or sensor structure inside another counter or sensor structure. But you can save a sequence containing a counter or sensor and then place that in a new counter or sensor structure. To demonstrate this, we're going to create a sequence that contains a counter and place that into a sensor structure. So here's our first sequence. It's a counter that's going to blink the LED red and green rapidly. So we're changing the times to 0.1 second on the red and green expressions. And we're going to run it uh, eight times. And then if we play that, well, we'll save it first as blink. And then if we play that, you can see it very quickly uh, flashing the LED. Now we're going to make a new sequence using uh, the distance sensor on port 1 of our simple bot. And then if uh, something is near the simple bot, it's going to turn left and then it's going to blink using the blink sequence. And if something's far away, we'll have um, the servo turn right and we'll turn the LED blue. Now with this sequence we'll also do something a little different. We're going to have the track where the sensor records that something's far away uh, repeat but the track where something is near not repeat. And so what this will do is as long as um, no obstacle is detected or no object is detected it will run the far track. As soon as something is detected, it'll run the near track once, and there you can see that going, and that's the end of the program. So you can see as I put my hand next to it again, it doesn't do anything. And that's it. You now know everything you need to in order to program the hummingbird.